another edition of Community Conversations. I'm Frederick County Executive Jan Gardner, and I'm pleased to have joining me today Major General Brian Line, who is the commander of the U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command at Fort Detrick. And boy, that's a mouthful. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's uh, great to be here, and thank you very much for inviting us down for this. Well, I'm pleased to have you here on the show today. Um, certainly, Fort Detrick's been an important part of the Frederick County community for many, many uh, generations and decades. And um, I really wanted to first have you have an opportunity to, to introduce yourself and tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, we're, uh, we're a, a very happy member of the, of the Frederick community. Um, my wife and I uh, showed up here in September of 2014 and have been working at uh, Fort Detrick and uh, been part of the Frederick community uh, really since then. I'm a career military. I came into the Army at 18, went to West Point, and have been uh, uh, in the Army ever since. I'm a physician, I'm a general surgeon, uh, and I've been deployed several times as a, as a physician and as a leader. And uh, now my wife and I are up here. We have three kids. Um, one is uh, in the Navy, and she's stationed down in D.C. And then we have uh, two other boys. Uh, the youngest is graduating from college, the other one is going to school here in uh, George Mason Law School down in D.C. as well. So Very good. So they're pretty close to home. Yeah, the two, we had uh, Easter together, so uh, we all came up and actually helped move my daughter from one apartment to another. So Very nice. So your background is really as a physician and a surgeon primarily, um, but you've moved into a leadership capacity where you're not doing active surgery anymore. Right but you certainly understand the science and the research and its purpose uh, of all that work being done at Fort Detrick. So what do you think is, can you tell us a little bit about the work that's being done there and the importance of that work? Yeah, well, the importance of that work uh, can't be understated. We're focused on taking care of the soldier and their family. Um, and it, it doesn't, it, it's really simple. Um, Everything on making sure that soldier is as ready as he or she can be going into harm's way. Um, preventing diseases, preventing injuries, preventing illnesses, or if they get a disease or an injury or an illness, we take care of them and then allow them to recover as, as much as they can. And so this all, you know, when I first came into the Army and I had just graduated from doing my surgical training, I was stationed at Longstuhl, which was the big hospital, and uh, Black Hawk Down occurred. And we understood at that time that we didn't have all the processes in place and we couldn't stop bleeding and, and we couldn't control bleeding and we didn't have an effective trauma system to take care of the casualties that were coming out of, uh, coming out of Somalia to Longstuhl. And uh, the research that we do, and we have several areas of research that we're focused on. One big area is trauma research and taking care of the casualties. And we've learned a lot about taking care of the casualties coming out of Iraq and Afghanistan. And that trauma research that we've been able to do has led to survivability on the battlefield that has been, never been surpassed. If you're injured in combat today, you've got about a 92% chance of surviving. And if you get to a hospital, one of our field hospitals, you have over a 99% chance of coming home, which oh, is a huge, uh, huge amount of, uh, of success. And a lot of that's due to training. A lot of that's due to research and providing uh, blood products, uh, life-saving procedures, and life-saving care at the tip of the battlefield. We also do a lot of uh, research into infectious diseases, as well as chemical and biological threats uh, for the United States and for, you know, for the United States military and for the United States. So you, we did a lot of research um, for Ebola. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of research on anthrax. We do a lot of research on plague, not offensive research. So the, all that we're doing is, is, is how do we either develop a vaccine or how do we develop a treatment uh, to pr uh, either prevent the disease or treat it uh, to lead to survivability. So a lot of the research that we've been doing over the last 15 years has been instrumental in how our nation responded to the Ebola crisis in West Africa. Yeah, that's right. And so while it's, the focus is on protecting the health and welfare of the warfighter, in, at the end of the day, every public health advance that comes out of that research benefits you know, the whole country and really the whole world. 
because uh, treatments are developed uh, to make the quality of life better for patients everywhere. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly right. And so up at Fort Detrick, it's not just the Army. So we actually have labs on Fort Detrick. It's probably one of the most unique campuses anywhere within the military in that we have the, the National Cancer Institute has got a large portion of property up there. The National Institutes of Health has a lab up there. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has a lab up there. And the Department of Homeland Services all have labs up there. So it's, we're, we're working together. And so it's not that we do research only for us. It's, it's everybody together does the research and uh, a lot of collaboration goes on, both within the research cells, but within the lab scientists as well, to make sure that we're uh, all focused on one area. So like I said, Ebola was a great area yeah. and we're working right now with uh, National Institutes of Health and several others on the response to our nation's uh, Zika crisis right, that you hear in the news. Mm -hmm. Uh, developing uh, vaccines and developing some treatment protocols, as well as developing lab tests to make sure that if the person's got it, we can actually detect it and detect it quickly so we can give them advice about what to do. Okay, so what are some of the um, key discoveries that have been made out of the research from um, the labs at Fort Detrick? Uh, well, the first one we developed, uh, probably one of the ones that's been talked about the most is the HIV vac or the vaccine against AIDS. Um, we've been working with our partners in Thailand and we developed a vaccine that was about 60% effective against the, against the AIDS virus, which is huge. Mm -hmm. so We're working with uh, several other foundations to develop a worldwide vaccine against AIDS. The tourniquet that you see that has led to so many soldiers' lives, the combat action tourniquet came out of research that was done there. Um, the use of a dressing, it's made up of ground up shrimp, sal sh shrimp shells. Okay. And uh, you apply it to a wound and it stops bleeding. Um, dry fiber and steel sealant dressing came out of uh, research that's being done there. Most of the medications that are being used against malaria today um, came out of research that was done in partnership with uh, the labs that we're doing uh, either at Fort Detrick or in conjunction with the National Institutes of Health. So I don't think that um, the average resident actually knows the breadth of the research that's done at Fort Detrick and the difference it's made not only in the survival of people in, in combat zones but just around the world. I mean we know in this day and age we saw this with the Ebola crisis that we're very concerned about the global impacts of things that used to, we would say, were far away. And now, really, we know that it could spread uh, worldwide. So these things have become a much greater interest to the general public. And right. it really elevates the importance of the work. So, and staunching blood is important on the combat field. It's important in our trauma centers. So it, it really does help. Uh, medical care everywhere with the great work that's done at Fort Detrick. No, yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, and, and that's true. That, so a lot of our researchers go out and present their data in national symposia, a lot of which are held around here because because of where we're located. There's a lot of uh, research symposia, and that, that's an opportunity where we get to share a lot of the findings. And, you know, speaking of sharing our findings, you know, 10 years ago, Fort Detrick used to be wide open. And, pe and we would have these wonderful fairs and, and people could come in and see what Fort Detrick is. And we're starting that up again. So uh, the middle of May, on May the 21st, uh, we're having an open house for the entire community uh, to come on there and we're putting on display a lot of the things that we talked about, a lot of the work that we're doing in bleeding control, a lot of the work that we're doing in the vi uh, vaccines and all the rest of that stuff, as well as the Maryland National Guard, our Marines on base, our Air Force on base. Uh, we're opening it all back up and, and having good. a big display for, and we're hoping that the community shows up uh, to thank the community uh, really for the support that they've provided for, for us and our families. Well, it has been harder to get on base in recent yeah. years. Security has um, increased and it's been heightened and I think that's probably true on military bases around the country. And so, um, but Fort Detrick, um, is, has had a lot of positive partnerships with uh, people in the community over the years. Certainly been very supportive of STEM education, right. science, technology, engineering, and math with various programs for students. And so I, 
you know, and you really our largest employer. So certainly the people that work there uh, have a great understanding of the work and have really been involved and engaged in our community in a positive way. Um, we have had uh, and we still have a, a citizen-based group that uh, tries to uh, address concerns about lab safety and ensure the public that the right protocols are in place because there's always risks of things happening because of just human error. And uh, we appreciate that Fort Detrick has participated in that because people do have a right to know what's happening uh, in their community. Um, so I think it's been really a, a wonderful uh, sense of partnership that we've had with Fort Detrick over the years. And I'm pleased that you're gonna open up the um, base so that people can come in again uh, because people are very accustomed to that for a long time in our community. Um, so I hope that uh, you, know, you feel that the community has had great partnerships with you. I think everybody wants to support our military and support that research in our community. So we try to be a good partner back as well. You know, the community and the county of Frederick and, and the surrounding areas has been, has been so incredibly supportive of us. Um, and I can't drive around here in my uniform and not get thanked and people coming up to me when I'm out in the, you know, going to various events or just out doing business. Uh, people coming up to me, people coming up to all the soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines that work on there and, and thanking us. And this is, you know, my wife and I have moved 17 times and wow. this is probably one of the greatest communities that we've had in terms of community support. Um, as you mentioned, the, the GEMS program, uh, the SEED program, and the STEM program is a way of us giving back to the community and, you know, selfishly to grow the next generation of future scientists and mathematicians and engineers. Uh, our, our, you know, cooperation with the Visitation Academy, our cooperation with the St. Catherine School, um, and what we've done with Hood, Co Hood College over the last couple of years you know, 750 kids that have gotten an opportunity to participate in the in the summer STEM program is huge. Is. Opening their eyes and getting them to see work with robots and all the rest of that stuff. It's it's so cool to go out there and see them and and enjoying and, and really getting energized about being becoming a you know a scientist or a you know a, a, an, an engineer. engineer. Yeah, they really love it, and and it gives us an opportunity. Because a lot of our faculty um, volunteer at, at those events, and so it's a great way to give back to the community. Well, and I think it does work. I think it does really stimulate interest in the in the science and research and technology fields, and uh, kids are jazzed up, and then they pursue that as they advance right. through their uh, college careers. By giving them some experiences on stuff that we're doing out there, you know, in terms of research and chemical and biological agents and research and blood and blood coagulation and all the rest of that stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it offers them the opportunity and shows them that we're not doing anything, you know, behind the scenes or, you know, anything right. like that. It helps there. to keep you transparent. Exactly. So we all like that in government at all levels. Yep. So before we adjourn, because our time is almost up, do you have anything happening uh, in the near term future that anything planned that you could share? Well, we have, um, like I said, we have the the twenty first is uh, is the uh, the twenty first of May is when we're going to have the uh, open house. Uh, so we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, the third of June, we have our ball. Uh, once again, we're restarting a lot of things, so we're going to have a huge military ball uh, where everybody's going to be invited to. And then we'll probably have uh, some more events that we're doing in terms of morale, welfare and recreation, our MWR does a lot with getting our soldiers out into, into the community. Okay. So lots of, uh, lots of big things going on at, uh, at Fort Detrick. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, we appreciate having Fort Detrick as such an important and vital part of our community. So thank you for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit about what's happening at Fort Detrick. Uh, thank you for joining us for this edition of Community Conversations.